I do want to put up a list of people that were at this donor retreat that could be on the short list for the former president. And uh, he said, has hinted at it, he won't announce until potentially midsummer around the RNC convention. Here are some of the names there on this list from what happened over the weekend in Palm Beach, Florida. Of course, North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum, South Dakota Governor Chrissy Noem, South Carolina Senator Tim Scott, Ohio Senator J.D. Vance, you just heard from Rubio, New York Congresswoman Elise Stefanik, Florida Congressman Byron Donalds, and also former 2024 candidate Vivek Ramaswamy. So some interesting names on there. Let's bring into the conversation right now national politics reporter for Bloomberg, Stephanie Lai. Stephanie, thank you so much for joining us here on Live Now from Fox. And of course, it's going to be very interesting to see which name is alongside Trump on this uh, ticket come November. But what are we learning about some of those names and maybe how important was this meeting in Palm Beach this weekend? Yeah, well, I mean, we've been kind of tracking this for a long time. You know, my colleagues and I at Bloomberg News have been trying to figure out what factors are really important for Trump and his campaign. And one of the things that have come up time and time again among the people that we've spoken with is, of course, one, loyalty. They want a VP who will be loyal to the president, help him oversee uh, his agenda, uh, and not be a cog in the machine. Another thing that is particularly important is fundraising. You know, uh, Biden still out, has outraised Trump by a significant margin, and part of that is due to his uh, advantage of being the sitting president. And so something that the Trump campaign is looking for is someone who can help fundraise and help raise money for the campaign. And so this meeting in Palm Beach this weekend was particularly important, given the fact that they're putting these uh, contenders in front of the most major donors to the campaign and sort of seeing what their reaction is to these candidates. Yeah, it is very interesting because it's a very wide-ranging group uh, on the Republican side. And in terms of some of those things that they are factoring, which one do you think is a priority from that? You mentioned the fundraising, but are there other maybe stances? Is it going to be a woman? Is it going to be a black man like Tim Scott? Are there other factors within there that they're kind of weighing as well? Which priority maybe sits at the top? Yeah, well, early on, we were hearing that uh, the president was considering uh, choosing a VP that would be either a woman or a person of color. And it's it's sort of unclear if he still feels this way now. Uh, one thing that we've seen is that President Trump does particularly well, at least this cycle compared to previous cycles, with uh, Black and Latino voters. So having a VP who identifies with either group doesn't necessarily help him all too much. It could, of course, give him an extra bump. But at this point in the race, it's not really clear if that's what he needs to uh, be successful come November. And so it really does come down to someone who can help uh, be the best surrogate for his campaign while he's either busy dealing with legal troubles um, or just away, just given his schedule. Yeah, and let's get into that in just a little bit, but as well, and of course, we've heard from Marco Rubio there on Fox News Sunday, but there are maybe more controversial candidates, potentially like Christy Noem after the book came out and some of those quotes from it, and there are others, maybe less controversial candidates. In terms of which way do you think he sways, are we getting any indication about that? Because you don't necessarily want to make waves, you don't want to kind of overshadow the former president, I don't think that's possible, but in terms of the controversial nature of some of these candidates, which way potentially are they leaning? Certainly. Well, I think that is something that might be too too soon to tell. Um, of course, the campaign has already started, you know, doing some internal vetting, uh, making sure that they know exactly what they're getting into with these candidates. Um, but in terms of, you know, what what someone does currently might not be super relevant come three months from now. And we have to remember that, you know, like you said earlier, the election is six months away and whoever ends at, ends up at the top of this list might not be the person that we expected, you know, in, in uh, April or May. Yeah, that is so very true. A lot could change in six months, both in terms of this election, but also in terms of what's coming up uh, with the vice president. And we just laid out some of those names as well. Could the vice president be on a list that's not this list? Could they the name not be on this list? And maybe are there people out there that want to be vice president that aren't on this list right now? Certainly. Well, I was in Palm Beach this weekend and just chatting with some folks, and it seems like, you know, this is a list that's continuing to expand. Of course, there are some uh, politicians that are on the top of the list. As we know, you know, Governor Doug Burgum, uh, Senator Tim Scott, uh, Senator Marco Rubio, um, and Senator J.D. Vance are, of course, sort of right now the leading contenders. But the campaign isn't necessarily just 
you know, focused solely on these four candidates. They're, they've got a lot of time to decide. And I'm, uh, you know, I, I would expect them to continue looking for alternative candidates should, you know, should a better alternative come up. Yeah, now I do want to ask you because they asked the question there, Shannon did, of Marco Rubio talking about the Florida and Florida connection. Another person from Florida that we know has said he doesn't really want to be the vice president, but he just dropped out of the race recently is the governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis. Is that a name? Could he slide in there as well? I know the Florida connection is kind of an interesting one. Uh, could that be a name that slides in there as well? I mean, it is possible. I do think that just given the well, the very long primary in which the two candidates went, you know, after each other time and time again, it might be one of the more unlikely decisions. Of course, that's not saying that any, you know, of course, that's saying with the grain of salt that anything can happen between now and November. Um, but at, at this current moment, I don't necessarily know, based off of my sources, that they have the best relationship, um, at least compared with some of these other contenders. Yeah, some of those other contenders, of course, you also mentioned that they were in a heated primary, but Vivek Ramaswamy was also in that primary. He is at that meeting as well, but we haven't heard about Nikki Haley, but Christy Nome there as well. I do want to put up just some video. Some of these individuals there with a lot of pedigree, a lot of experience uh, in politics as well. Uh, I do want to ask you about this in terms of what we saw from his first term as president when he picked Mike Pence as vice president as well. Is there anything we can glean from who he did, who he had before in that role and maybe indications of what's to come for his uh, his race, his, uh, his names on the ticket? Yeah, I mean, I think that is a really great question. And the choice of uh, Mike Pence back in 2016 was certainly to help him build out his electoral electoral base, especially among Christian and um, you know Christian conservative voters. Uh, it, it's not necessarily as important this time around, just given the fact that he has you know, almost universal name ID, he does uh, tend to dominate the airwaves. And so the person that he picks might not necessarily be as consequential than, than you know, back in 2016 when he first ran. That makes sense. It's a very new race eight years later. Um, one of my last questions for you is because we talk about Trump and the vice president, and it might not be a matter of who, it might be a matter of when, because we constantly see the former president in New York City at that hush money trial. And potentially if he picks a vice president before that trial wraps up, they can kind of be out on the trail stumping for the president, stumping for the ticket as well. Do you think the trials, the different trials that he's involved in, could maybe expedite his decision making on who will be on the ticket with him? Well, certainly that is a question that's uh, on top of mind for many of the donors who were at this retreat uh, this last weekend. Uh, it's too soon to say just how many more legal cases might uh, muck up the campaign schedule uh, just because they just haven't been decided yet. But it is certain, certainly clear that you know the trial in New York has been taking him off the campaign trail and that having a vice presidential candidate uh, take over that role for him in this present moment would be a significant advantage. Um, but it still seems like the president has said that he's going to make a decision closer to the convention. Yeah, is that still kind of the, the kind of common sense, the, the knowledge that we're expecting that it's going to be sometime until the, con uh, the convention that he might announce the name, might tell the person who's going to be on the ticket with him? Seems like it. All right. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Stephanie. Any parting words, any more thoughts about this? Because it's a very important retreat there uh, just near Mar-a-Lago, not at Mar-a-Lago. But uh, anything else that you can glean? Any other notes that we might need to know here on Live Now with Fox before I let you go? Yes, yeah, certainly. Well, not necessarily vice presidential related, but uh, the campaign seemed very bullish uh, in their presentation to donors this weekend. Uh, they seem to suggest that they're thinking about expanding their electoral map and their presence in Minnesota and Virginia, two states that haven't historically been won by Republicans in a very long time. And so if they if their polling does hold up and the president does have a good chance of winning these states, this could be you know, potentially a, a very significant win for the president. Yeah, that'll be very interesting and also could change the factor that we were just talking about vice president and which candidate potentially could be there for him as well. So a lot can change in six months. We'll see what happens on November the 5th. But from now until then, a lot uh, to uncover, a lot to reveal as well. All right, Stephanie, thank you so much for joining us here on Live Now from Fox.